Uh, once again, Aiton demonstrating uh, his his power inside. Uh, it just seems like the Lakers couldn't make any shots. I mean, they got shots. They looked kind of flat a little bit, and it just seemed like they didn't kind of match what Phoenix was doing for four quarters. So it was just, you know, points in the paint. They got outscored. I think only he double checked. I think it was like maybe what 19 assists or 18 assists. The ball was 19 assists, James, and lost the paint battle 44 yeah, to only. Ball 36. wasn't moving. A lot of categories, and I know we lost AD, but even before that, it just didn't seem like that they were matching the energy. And then after AD, they just really were disarrayed. Never got, uh, you know, formulated into any type of uh, cohesiveness or continuity on offense. Uh, it's something they're going to have to look at. Now, I, I, I give Phoenix a lot of credit tonight. They, they played their way. They played their game. And uh, so they, they, they deserved this night. But the Lakers just didn't, didn't have what they normally have. Rob, midway through that second quarter, it's 37-27 Lakers. What changed? Uh, I think the, the halftime is what did it. You know, through that second quarter, they were rolling. When halftime came out, no AD. It was almost like they didn't get organized on the court. Um, Defensively or offensively, they didn't get any points in the paint, like you said. And there was a lot of things that just went on as far as, like, getting back. And with me, it was like every time a guy turned the ball over, it's almost like they want to do this instead of sprinting back. Use that energy and slapping your hands or looking at the ref to get back on defense. There's no whistles. There's no need to complain. This is the playoffs. You don't have time to complain or worry about a turnover. So that's what Phoenix wants. They're a team that uses that fast break to get their threes. They use that fast break to get Chris Paul to probe the inside. And with Chris Paul being healthy, he was able to knock down his patented mid-range jumper. So a lot of things came into effect in that second half that the Lakers just couldn't, you know, defend off. Yeah, we'll talk AD in a little bit. I want to talk Chris Paul in a little bit. First, I want to talk this third quarter. You mentioned coming out at halftime, guys. Um, look at these numbers for the Lakers in the third quarter. Really tough to win no matter where you play. Uh, just 3 of 16 for 19% from the field. I mean, the Suns went 0 for 6 for 3, but the Lakers didn't capitalize. 0 for 7. Six turnovers, just 15 points, and also big game to me, no fire. No sense of urgency, no rhythm, and I think the sun smelled blood in the water. All of a sudden, you feel the wind go out of the sails with that Laker team and in that arena. There's no AD, no KCP in the second half, and the sun said, let's take advantage. It just it didn't look like that team was glued tightly together. They were kind of together, but it wasn't like that tight. Now, they made a run down the stretch in the fourth quarter, but it was a little too late. I think for me, when you watch this game, I didn't realize so I just really looked closely at the stats. They took 81 shots tonight. 40. 40 were three-pointers. Mm -hmm. So that means every other shot was a three. Mm -hmm. And that's a sign of me you just settling. And, mm -hmm. and if I look at this Phoenix Suns team, they're not a tall team. You're not attacking. And that's what you have to do when a team is small. You have to attack their basket. You're playing into the Phoenix Suns' hands now by shooting outside shots getting the long rebounds, yeah. rebounds going to the elbows, and they're starting the fast break. And that's what the Lakers got to understand. You know, I know it's a different era from when James and I played. It's a three-ball game. But still, half your shots from threes, that's too many. Yeah, guys, and um, obviously the big story, AD uh, in the second quarter goes down to the ground. And what we know now, it's hard to talk too much about it before you know what the prognosis is going to be. We haven't heard from him yet. We haven't heard from the Lakers. But it's a groin and he didn't return. So I think what's going on in everyone's mind, whether you're a player, a fan, or us. Anytime you hear about a growing being pulled or strained, uh, it's more serious than, 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 than most. You know, it takes time. You're not just going to hop up in a couple of days and come back and play. So we'll just have to see, you know, what the diagnosis is and how he's able to heal tomorrow and see what he feels like. I mean, Rob, we both had a groin injury. It depends. There are different levels yes in severity right it's it's a strain could be you know a few days it could be a week depends on how it gets worked out and a, a poll is uh, as, as you know i mean i i've missed a couple months you you said you missed an entire summer mm -hmm. one time so you, you know you're speculating right now but uh those, those those thoughts are definitely running through their minds right now yeah because the, the groin injury is 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 so close to that no-no place yes. it's hard to treat 
and it's it's such a a difficult and sort of like dead so hopefully this is just a a a, a a strain or a spasm because sometimes it can spasm and feel like a strain and he won't uh, be affected he can come back and, and be AD that's attacking and, and we're getting word that we will not hear from AD he's already left the arena big game well I mean look um, as an injured player he does not have to address the media from what I understand and if he's not going to address the media he has a, a personal trainer they may have wanted to expedite his treatment and get him out of there uh, and get him home and, you know, see what the prognosis is going to be and how they're going to treat it tonight, today, and uh, see what he feels like tomorrow. So, yeah, I bet he must didn't have much to say that has already been said about the injury. Yeah, you see his minutes right there, just 20. Those were all in the first half. Six points on two of nine, four rebounds, one block. So he had yet to even get it going. Uh, was not as involved as I'm sure the Lakers would like, especially coming off uh, two 30 and 10 games in a row. Before we get to the highlights, CP3, guys, um, I kind of wrote down in the third quarter that he was the difference maker. You could tell that's the best he's felt since he got injured in that game one. He had 18 points. What is his health and just that spark that he adds? And, and, and you could tell he smelled blood in the water, big game. What does it mean to this series? We need, we need, we, are, you, are you talking about Chris Paul? Yeah, what does oh, it mean to the series? Well, well, Chris Paul, you know, Rob said it. He had two days off. He has two days off for treatment, and, you know, he's able to take over games as he did right here, and he's also able to lead. What he conveys to his players and timeouts and how he gets them settled and keeps them that way for four quarters. I don't think they ever were out of sync. You know, they're never out of sync. You know, you turn the ball over, you make it easier for them. And as Rod stated, 43s, those are long rebounds. They're, they're out and running. So, yeah, they're, they're going to have to really, you know, dig deep. But, but Chris Paul on the court, um, whether he's 100% or not, he's still able to be efficient and knock down big shots and, and lead his team. Yeah, he's just a dangerous leader on the court in so many different ways. From playing defense, you know, it was a crucial moment where he, like, slapped the ball away from uh, the shooter from um, uh, uh, Mark. And so he's just a yeah, pesky a big play. guy. Uh, yeah. uh, the Suns were only up seven a couple mm -hmm. minutes, so Lakers were still yeah. in at that point. All right, let's get you to the highlights. We'll take you out to Staples Center. Drop game four. They lose 192. The series is now tied at two apiece, and it shifts back to Phoenix having home court. That game will be on Tuesday night at 7. Reminder, that game's on Spectrum Sportsnet. We'll have the pregame for you at 6, of course. LeBron with 25, Gasol with 12, Kuz with 11. Chris Paul leading the way with 18 points, 7 of 15, 9 assists. All right, Brez, bring him in. What do you got for us, buddy? Yeah, I want to take a big, look, big picture look Excuse me, at the Lakers, go back to last season. If you think of the playoffs, they were pretty much injury-free. You had Rondo missing most of the first round, but LeBron, AD, both guys were good to go the entire playoff run. That was huge. Now this season, the complete opposite. LeBron missed a third of the season. You got AD missing exactly half the season. Keep in mind, just two and a half weeks ago, AD sat out a game because of some, some tightness in the groin area. So guys, let's not forget, not only did AD leave in the second quarter, KCP did not play the game today. He's got some uh, knee issues. This brings up two great points. Let's start with the health one first. You guys played for a lot of championship teams. James, you also missed out on a couple opportunities because of injuries, one being to you. You know how tough it is. No one cares. No one feels bad for you. The games are still going to go on, but it is tough. It is tough to overcome. It is difficult, especially when you don't have time to overcome those injuries. You know, if this was at the beginning of the season, you might be able to say, okay, we can readjust and we'll get them back. But right now, you're about to go play game five and you possibly will maybe without, we don't know yet, we're not saying, but you could be without AD and Pope. So uh, I go back to every team has suffered. You look at Miami, you know, they extended their season in the bubble mm -hmm. last year. Look at Denver, Murray's out. You know, it's just unfortunate that last year uh, the whole league got put under the gun. And then they came back this year with an incredible schedule, back-to-back -back games, having to travel a lot. So we're seeing the residual, I believe, of a unique 
uh, year last year uh, during the pandemic. And, you know, injuries happen, but they happen a lot more frequently this year uh, than I've seen with, with, with most teams. You have to overcome it. It's happening to everybody. Game must go on. You know, the thing about injuries is you, you have to be lucky and you have to avoid them. You know, out of the seven championships I won, I've only had one team that was injury prone, and that was the second championship. But after that, we were fully healthy. And that's when the luck comes in because think about it. And you were injured all the way up to the playoffs. Yeah. Yeah, and think about it. LeBron gets rolled up on. AD right there just hits one leg, and your leg gets kicked another way. There's so many freaky things that can happen in a game. That's why we always say we don't play with a team. You finish them because mm -hmm. anything can happen within the game. You can step on someone's ankle a la Kobe Bryant and miss the game. There's so many things, like I said, that can happen. So you finish someone, you take them out, and you end the game. So then you can rest and worry about whatever's going to happen later. All right, let's go to Staples. Frank Vogel is talking to the media. And then, Frank, how did you see that impact the game, especially in that third quarter, offense, defense, uh, mindset, mental, all that kind of stuff? Yeah, well, he's one of the best players in the world, so, you know, you have to adjust. And, um, you know, I thought we, uh, we gave great effort in trying to overcome that loss, but, uh, you know, certainly wasn't, uh, wasn't enough. Dan? Valley. Hey, Frank. Um offensively, what were you looking for without AD, and, and were you able to find it tonight? Um, yeah, we're looking to score the ball. You know, and uh, there's a lot of ways that, you know, we play, you know, the, the personnel skill set of the guys we have out there. Uh, obviously, a lot of it is through Braun. Um, you know, we played with uh, with the roller, with Drum, played for a spark with Trez. We spaced the floor with Mark, and, um, you know, we just didn't get enough... Uh, uh, offensive output in that second half. Hey. Frank, prior to the, the groin for AD, what did you make of his 19 minutes in the first half? Yeah, I thought he was laboring a little bit. You know, he was saying that his knee was uh, was sore, uh, but there was no way he was not going to play. And um, yeah, I thought he gave a, a heck of a run at it, uh, trying to trying to compete through pain. Um, you know, and then obviously he came out with the with the groin injury. Let, let's just say he is at that level going into game five. Is that a go for you, or is it? We'll make all those decisions over the next couple of days. Okay. Frank, what do you think you guys learned in that stretch in February and March when you did not have AD but did have LeBron? You know, I, you struggled a little bit in those first games afterward, but then seemed like you figured something out before LeBron had, had his own injury. Um, how do you think it might look going forward if he's not able? Yeah, um, you know, when I competed against against uh, the Miami Heat and uh, either Wade or Bosch was out and there was more touches for Braun, that wasn't always necessarily a good thing for, for my, my Pacers teams. You know, so, um, you know, it's just going to be more opportunity for Braun. And, you know, obviously uh, we need other guys to step up, not, not one other guy, but everybody. You know, it's got to be a group effort. Uh, we need contributions from everyone, and you know we did have a stretch like this where we played without AD uh, that we'll we'll draw on, you know, to uh, to take us into Game Five if, if AD is not available. Kyle. Hey Frank, touching a little bit more on that, you talked in the series about the formula of leaning on LeBron and AD on the offense and and needing the, the role players to kind of be more defensively focused. Does that shift now? I mean, are you, are you asking for more? Do you ask for the same things? How does, how does that go mentally for your other guys? Yeah, I mean, if all of our players, if they play within the system, um, you know, they can, they can execute and they can give offensive output. So, um, you know, that's what we're going to ask of our guys. And, you know, obviously, you know, you look at, uh, you know, deeper into your bench, you know, to see if, uh, you know, if there's other guys that are more needed now with AD out, um, you know, if he's out for game five and, uh, and you make those decisions accordingly. Sorry, last question, Rashawn. Hey, Coach. Um, obviously, AD, very important to what you do. Chris, Paul, very important to what they do. Um, how do you see the significance of that sort of play out in the third quarter with, you know, him not being able to come back out, but then Chris started to get going there for them as well? I mean, obviously, uh, it hurt us. And, you know, Chris competing through uh, his injury, 
um, you know, played his best game of the series, you know, so, uh, and obviously the, you know, that was the difference that third quarter. And did you say there was going to be, a, was there going to be any type of imaging tomorrow, like an MRI or anything like that for he's AD? Undergoing, he's undergoing further, uh, further medical evaluation. Thanks, Thanks guys. All right, the Western Conference, here's how it's shaping up. Utah 2-1 to one over the Grizzlies. Clippers get back in the series. They win game three in Dallas. They'll be playing later on in game four. Nuggets and Blazers all tied up after Portland wins game four. And Phoenix 2-2 two -two as well. So the Western Conference, very, very tight. All right, guys, you heard from Frank Vogel. Um, no word on AD yet going for further evaluation. I do want to talk about KCP. Rob, you and I were concerned after last game because you know how valuable he is defending Phoenix guards and even if he's able to play you just don't know what that hyperextension is going to be like so now he doesn't play him coming back is even more crucial with with the uncertainty of AD yeah well, you, you you need a defensive stopper um, I know KCP is not known for his block shots but he's known for his strips he has patented that he's been uh, in book also because he had that little meeting of the minds after game two with LeBron LeBron said oh don't worry about the key plan. So he's starting to be more aggressive. So we need him in there because he brings so much energy and so much passion to the game. He's totally a disruptor. I mean, he's not going to stop you every time, but you're going to feel his pain and his presence. And so what he does on defensive end is critical. And then his ability to knock down the shot. We all know when KCP hits one or two threes and gets going, especially from the corner, that that's a valuable asset to have when he's in the game. That pressure defense. So, yeah, it'd be a welcome sight if he's able to come back. A lot of times when you have that injury, you know, offense, I've said this before, you can kind of dictate where you want to go, but it's when he has to react to somebody else. That's going to be the big test for him. Yeah, KCP, right up till about uh, an hour before tip off, he was a maybe for the game tonight. So that means he's close. So that could be good. The bad news for him, only uh, two days until the next game, it'll be in Phoenix instead of maybe three or so. I want to go back to what Frank just said. I thought it was interesting. He was asked uh, by Dave McMenamin of ESPN, you know, uh, what do you think uh, of AD before he got hurt? And Frank was honest. He said, you know, he was two for nine. I thought he was laboring. Remember, AD came in with a questionable designation because of a sprained knee. So AD kind of feeling it in a couple of different uh, areas of his body right now. Frank uh, asked, you know, what's, what's the timetable? Basically, he said, we're going to make all our decisions over the next couple of days. So no rush. For the Lakers, uh, seems like AD is going to get further testing. Uh, no specifics, whether it's an MRI exam or anything like that. We'll just have to wait and see. All right, Game 5, Lakers Suns is on Tuesday right here on Spectrum. So let's go back to Staples Center. Mark Gasol is talking with Allie Clifton in the media. Hey, Mark. Uh, obviously, AD makes a big difference, but how much did losing him and having to adjust on the fly, both mentally and physically, would you say factored into this one starting there in the second half? Um... Obviously, you, you know, you miss a guy like AD, you, you, you center a possession that you need to do in order to win uh, playoff games. You know, heading into that fourth, Frank did tell Rachel Nichols that understanding as a team that you do have enough will be key. And I know the regular season was the regular season, Mark, and it's different than postseason, but you guys had to play a stretch without him and not knowing how long or if you have to play more without him. Can you lean on those moments right now? And if so, what does that look like? There's plenty of confidence that we have enough to win. Yeah. Without AD, that's that's not even a, a, a question uh, for anybody in the locker room. So, you know, obviously, you know, you lose it in the moment of the game. Um, that kind of uh, can get your mind um, off track a little bit for some people. Um, hope it shouldn't, though. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know if that was the case, to be honest. Like, I don't know if that was AD with AD or without AD. Um, but you know, we just got to keep playing. And that's as simple as that. Thanks, Mark. You're welcome. For Kyle Goon, please. Hey, Mark. In that third quarter, you guys only scored 15 points. I was wondering, in your view, especially offensively, what happened? Were you guys sped up at all? What, what was the thing? I think the opposite, right? Like, we, we need to be a little more sped up offensively, um, have a little more pop. Um, you know, the ball is going to move better. Um, screener is going to be better. Um, you know, separation from the action. Once the screen happens, whatever, you know, if you show roll or pop or roll, whatever that you got to do, you have to do it um, at a pace where um, you're taking the lead uh, and, and you uh, kind of uh, imposing your will on the game. Um, you know, the ball got to move. 
a little faster. Um, you know, we got to run, you know, to, to the spacing that we're looking for and, and continue to make plays. You know, you, you miss a couple of shots. It doesn't matter. You next, next play, you got to get a stop. Um, and, and, and that's how it should be. You know, you, whatever happens offensively, defensively should not impact, you know, the next possession. So, um, we just going to continue to be, um, you know, strong minded and, uh, and, and, and next play. Yovan? Hey, Mark. Um, you guys obviously played about half the season w without AD. Uh, so if it comes down to him missing potentially a game or so, um, w what did you learn about the, the team during that stretch without him and, and, and kind of what kind of the, the stylistic differences of, of when he's on the floor versus when he's off? Um, you know, more, more movement. Um, you know, it's going to be um, probably more, more LeBron, uh, which is not a, a bad thing by any means. Um, you know, more space for, for uh, you know, the rollers, more space for the drivers. Um, but uh, uh, at the same time, defensively, you know, it is such an important piece for us. Um, you know, he can do a lot of things defensively that, you know, no one else can do. But, you know, with communication, with, with effort, um, and, uh, and being at the right place at the right time, we can do a lot more things defensively than we did tonight. Uh, and we need to continue to do those in order to win uh, Game 5, which is the only thing that really matters right now. All right. You see Mark Gasol and what he was able to do in the loss against the Suns in Game 4. 23 minutes, 12 points on 3 of 5 from 3, 8 rebounds and 3 blocks. What would you like the most about what he brought to the table, Rob? I think the way he can stretch the floor and, and open up the paint, because when he was out there, LeBron was more aggressive. He got to go in the post, and he got to kick it out to Mark. And Mark was always looking for pass. Only thing, I think Mark played pretty much a perfect game until that last moment when he let a six-foot guy deflect his pass and get a steal in a crucial moment. But other than that, you know, when, when Mark's in the game, the thing he does defensively, he just knows how to move his body. You know, we had a guy who, we just lost a guy in Mark Eaton. You know, one of the greatest shot blockers in the game, and he never left his feet. Hmm. And that's what Gasol, at this point in his career, reminds me of. He doesn't always have to leave his feet to block shot. He puts that. Gasol adds so many dimensions to the team when he comes in. Everyone gets an easier shot uh, because if you're moving out to basketball, especially if he's at the top of the key, you go back door, he's going to get you a higher, easier percentage shot. He also can knock down the three. And he's like a point guard. He organizes people and gets people to, to get stable so they can run the offense. He gets that. And then the main thing is he can bring eight now and knock down the three. So it's going to be interesting to see how Vogel uses him because he is a, a major asset when he's in the game. Yeah, no doubt. Remember earlier in the season, Gasol really struggled. In fact, some people were like, is this going to be his last year in the NBA? He's getting up there in years. He wasn't hitting outside, not really fast defensively with his footwork. Now, complete opposite. He looks great. Uh, obviously, he has overtaken Montrez Harrell as the uh, Lakers' backup center. Trez got in there a little bit in the fourth quarter. Rob, I know you uh, noticed that for sure, but cannot argue with Gasol leaping over Trez at this point in the season. What do you think about what he said about, hey, listen, yeah, you lose AD, but and that hurts you right now in this game, but now you got to go back to the drawing board, and there's a lot of things we, we, we can still do. I mean, there's not a guy in that locker room who doesn't think we can't win without him. Oh, no doubt. If you look at this team, they still match up very well with the Phoenix Suns. They might not be as fast, but they have a lot of veteran leadership and a lot of smart guys in that locker room. And sometimes when you just go back to the basics, you know, pass and cut. I know it sounds simple, mm -hmm. but, which it is. You know, Marcus All is one of the great facilitators at the top of the key. When those guys get to moving, you know, guys get easy buckets. And as we say all the time, when a guy gets a layup, oh, I see one go through. Now it makes your threes fall down too. So Mark is great at making guys around him better. Especially if we get Pope back and he's able to play at full capacity. Without AD, this team has proven that they, they play, you know, together. They play defense. Uh, guys like Kuz, uh, who we've yet to really see have that breakthrough, uh, like the games that we're accustomed to, uh, we have guys like that that can step up. So with or without AD, this team is still capable of winning and, and winning on the road. It's funny, the theme already out of the locker room. Frank Vogel said it. Marcus Gasol just said it. Get ready for a lot of LeBron in Game 5 if indeed AD cannot go. And Vogel had a pretty funny anecdote. He's like, hey, when he was with the Heat, if Bosh couldn't play or if Dwayne Wade couldn't play, and, and when Frank was coaching the Indiana Pacers, it meant trouble for the Pacers because it meant more LeBron 
on the ball. So if KCP can't play, that definitely helps. If AD doesn't play, obviously that's, that's a problem, but it's going to be a lot of LeBron. And if LeBron wants a little bit of motivation, he can just rewatch the stare down that Jay Crowder gave him after that hard foul mm. in the fourth quarter because Crowder was not letting him out of his sight. He, he heard LeBron co- kind of complaining, but uh, Crowder, kind of a, kind of a crazy stare down there, Geek. All right, time to go back inside the Laker locker room. Kyle Kuzma speaking with Mike Trudell. Hey, Kyle, I want to ask you about the third quarter, or just what you saw on the court as you guys tried to adjust to the change, obviously, with AD now coming out and how that impacted both sides. Yeah, we just had to adjust. Um, you know, I think, uh, you know, what is our DNA going to be without, without that? So, you know, I think that was just the biggest thing. You know, defensively, it wasn't wasn't our problem. You know, we held them to 100 points. So, um, and, you know, they had a couple of their players, you know, hit some shots. So. Yeah, and was there anything that you started to see as the second half went on? Uh, who's depending on his availability for game, uh, game five that you think you carry forward that could work a little better? Um, yeah, we just got to play, play in space, play with pace. I think if we can do that, get down, get downhill. Uh, you know, just get the ball popping. We'll be all right. Okay. Because this feels like more of the same considering how this season has gone for you guys. Does that prep you better for this moment, or does it make you feel like, oh, man, like, you know, the basketball guards are, the guys aren't helping us out this year? A little bit of both. You know, obviously, uh, we've been derailed this year, but uh, at the same time, we've been through it, so... You know, just got to figure it out. Just got to figure it out. Dan? Hey, there are kind of two questions. When did you get word that AD wasn't going to be ready uh, for the second half? And then, I guess on top of that, you said, you know, the ball needs to be popping and moving. I, I know that's been kind of a, a, a challenge in all series. What's Phoenix done to prevent that from occurring? Um, you know, uh, you know, nothing really. Uh, you know, we just got to do a better job of doing what we do best. Uh, and, you know, uh, whether he's out there or not, you know, we're going to have to play uh, a different style of basketball. So. And then when did, when did you hear um, at, at during halftime that he wouldn't be able to go? Oh, uh, 30 seconds on the clock. Beer. Uh, what, how would you describe kind of the mood of, of the team after kind of this latest news? I mean, you've had, you've had several injuries this year, but to, to have another one now at this point in the season, uh, how's, the, how's the team kind of taking this one more? Um, you know, so I think I think we're optimistic still, you know, being in the locker room, having conversations. We're just trying to figure out, you know, we do that every game. Okay. I bet. I already went. I bet. Okay. Bill? I also already went. Sorry. All right. Ramona. Okay. Kyle? I got, I got Sorry. I got you. Um, sorry about that. Um, hey, because, you know, Frank was just sitting here, because was just sitting here saying, you know, when he coached the Pacers and, and D. Wade or Chris Boss was out, it just meant more touches for Braun. Does that, does that give you does that give you a little confidence knowing you have a guy like LeBron out here to back up AD when he, when he can't be out there with you guys? I mean, yeah, I don't really look at it like that too much. I think, uh, you know, if he if AD's not out there, then, you know, we have to play a different style, a different brand of basketball. You know, it's not just throw, throw it and look at Brown the whole time. Um, you know, obviously he, he's great and he's all right, but, you know, for us, we've got to just play basketball. So, yeah. Kyle. Hey, Kuz, you said, um, you know, earlier in the series that you understood that, that your role wasn't always scoring and you were okay with that. If AD isn't able to play for, you know, game five or beyond, how, how does your mentality shift and is there something else you're tapping into there? Uh, yeah, I just got to, you know, that, if he doesn't, that just means, uh, you know, I had to ball my hands a little bit more. Um, 
you know, whether that means to score or make the right play, like I, you know, like I always try to do. Um, you know, it's not just, you know, go out there and just, now I got to just try to score 30. It's not that. Um, don't expect that. You know, it's being out there, playing sound, being the right, right spots, uh, get my teammates better, and when I'm open, be aggressive. So. Thanks, Kyra. Yeah position but sometimes you just have bad breaks during the game and all of those were bad breaks yeah I mean and that's something some of those things they'll look at and, and they'll say look we just need to get back on defense or so I've said it uh, I think earlier you cannot complain if there's no whistle blown get back on defense because when you don't you put your other teammates in jeopardy because they have to cover for you, and then before you know it, they're knocking down a three from the corner or someone's getting an easy layup. So uh, forget about the frustration and the calls. They don't go your way. It's a mad sprint back on defense, and the Lakers are pretty good at that. Yeah, Rob, you mentioned Drummond. Pretty quiet night for him tonight. He was having a good series. Came into tonight averaging a double-double, a couple block yeah. shots a game, shooting 63%. Tonight, though, did not have the numbers. Really not much of a factor in that second half. I don't know if he might try to cover for the loss of AD if indeed Anthony does not play in game five. But tough uh, step back tonight for uh, Drummond, the other AD. You know what I think they should do is Lakers, they should have a complaint jar. And if one of the players complains about anything, you had to put 100 bucks in that jar. Because now the Lakers are getting to the position where they're complaining too much. And we, I know a lot of people are talking about how, you know, the Suns got all the calls. It's because as a ref, when you complain a lot, they kind of don't give you the call. So if they just go out and just play basketball, they won't have to worry about it. So now you have to have a complaint, Josh. So anytime someone's complaining to the ref, you point and they owe you 100 bucks. And, and you know what? They should put the, the jar, the complaint jar, right here. Way up in the rafter somewhere where they can't get to it. <laughs> that way you know it won't be any complaint. So just play the game. We should get one here. Yeah. Ooh. Just uh -huh. get one. Who would put the so most in that? Sounds even now the series up at uh, two games apiece with the win tonight. Here's the Phoenix head coach, Monty Williams. That was the one thing that gave me a bit of confidence that he could do it uh, when he came in and he showed me what he could do with his arm pregame. And, and this was stuff that he couldn't do the last couple of days and especially in our last game. And so when I saw him do some things with his arm, Coach Willie Green took him out before the game and they, they worked out. And um, that, that gave me more confidence. And... With that being said, I had no idea he was going to be able to do what he did today, to be able to come off the screens and knock down shots. His passing was there. The instincts was there. The, the burst that we've seen this year wasn't as um, dynamic, but it was. you could see it's coming back. And so I think that gave us and the team a lot of confidence. You know, of pace and playing point five. And, and when we can get stops and get down the floor and the ball's just – moving around the gym. Um, don't know if it favors us, but that's how we like to play. And then we had guys step up and make shots today. And the other side of it is DA had 17 rebounds. You know, that, that was a relentless attitude. Uh, we lost that battle by one. But for, for him to have 17 boards in a game like this uh, was huge for us. Here's the Lakers calendar. Uh, it's all tied up at 2-2. What a series. Game five moves to Phoenix. It'll be right here on Spectrum Sportsnet. Do not forget that. Well, the pregame show for you as well. And then Thursday's also on Spectrum Sportsnet. If it goes to a game seven, that's going to be Saturday, June the 5th. All right, guys, let's talk a little sun. So obviously CP3 getting it going. DeAndre Ayton's having a great series. Devin Booker is doing his thing. For me, Rob, uh, the Suns' defense. Um, very underrated kind of coming into this series, and, and they were fantastic. I know there was no AD in that third quarter of taking the things away that the Lakers wanted to do, uh, the double teaming at the right time. They were the ones that, that had the steals and blocks this game as opposed to the Lakers in game two and three. Yeah, you know, James said it. They spent blood and water in that yep. third quarter. They came out and only held the Lakers to 15 points in that quarter, and that's what you have to do. And we always talk about 
starting halves the correct way. Yep. The Suns started that second half the correct way. They came out and played excellent defense. They were in passing lane, and they forced the Lakers to have a lot. Not go down 3-1, and they took advantage of what the Lakers didn't do. Lakers didn't move the ball. They were stagnant, only 19 assists. When AD went down, that was the time you're supposed to have a meeting of the minds and say, what do we have to do? We can't do a lot of one-on-one. -on -one. Uh, you know, Phoenix is not number two in the NBA by accident. And uh, they proved it there in the third quarter, only allowing 15 points for the Lakers. So the Lakers got to find a way to jumpstart their offense. You move the basketball, have more than 19 assists, get some easy buckets. But they do have to defend, and that's where it all starts. Yeah, guys, we talked before the, uh, before the game on the pregame show. Lakers did have the number one defense during the regular season. Don't forget, Phoenix was number six in defensive rating. So they score a lot of points, and they play good defense. Some pretty good pickups for them during the offseason. Uh, Jay Crowder, probably the top of that list defensively. Uh, big guy, can really uh, antagonize people. And Aiton, which is kind of singled out by Monty Williams. You know, he had 14 points. That's fine. It's about what he averaged during the regular season. But 17 rebounds. You know, he's kind of controlling the boards in these games. In particular, these playoffs, he really has shown that he deserves probably a pretty good pay raise. We'll see if he and the Suns can come to some sort of accord between now and the start of next season. As for now, the Lakers have to account for him, especially if AD is not in the game in, uh, on, on Tuesday. You know, when, when guys come out of school early, it yeah. takes them a while to mature. You know, look at Julius Randle, and I look at Aiden. Aiden was these guys who came out of school early. If you watched him at Arizona, uh, he was just like, eh, what is he going to be? You know, he was just trying to figure it out. He was just bigger than everybody else. And, but now he's trying to come into his body. He's trying to come into his manhood. And so now he's playing basketball at a high rate for big. He's doing exactly what a big should do, pick and roll, rebound, and block shots. All right, more to come on Access. Anthony Davis leaves with a left groin strain. Suns tie up the series 2-2. We'll be at 92. They shoot 44% from the field. Lakers just 40. 10 of 35 from three. The Lakers 13 of 40. 0 for 7 in that crucial third quarter. Um, you see the assists, as Big Game pointed out earlier, only 19. And the 16 turnovers at home, not going to do it. All right, time to go back to the Lakers locker room. LeBron James, he's talking with Mike Trudell in the media. Hey, LeBron, what was no most notable with that how AD as you guys started the third quarter and the game plan with it versus without the two totally different things? How did you guys try to adjust for the fly today? Uh, well, obviously you have a, a game plan going into a game. Going, going into game five, LeBron, how did you approach it as a leader uh, with the rest of the group? Ben, what was the key in the field break as you guys try to come up with some of the formula? Uh, well, I mean, it's next man up. I mean, obviously, um, if he's not ready for game five, it's going to be a tough blow for our ball club. But, you know, next man up. And uh, we've been like that all year. And, uh, you know, we're going to have to be like that in the hostile environment in game five. Hey. Yeah, LeBron, so the next man up obviously would uh, be referring to who would take his place in the lineup. Uh, but if AD plays or, and he's limited or even if he doesn't play, how does your role, uh, how does that fluctuate as the, movie, as the series moves forward? No, um, we'll see. Here. LeBron, you went through a, a groin injury two years ago that obviously uh, kept you out for a long time, and obviously two different two different groins here. But um, based on your experience with, with that injury, what does that do to kind of your ability to be optimistic about what AD might be able to give you the rest of the way in this series? Um, well, <clears throat> I'm not, I don't know the severity, of, um, so I, I, you know, I, I work my tail off in the off season. Um, you know, just to get back to, you know, playing at a, a, a restrict, a unrestricted, um, you know, level. So uh, I can only speak from my experience. I can't, I, I'm not, like I said, I don't know the severity of his injury. Um, and until we know, um, I'm not going to comment on it. Dan. LeBron, what's it going to take for you guys offensively um, to, to get on track here? This has been kind of, what, four games now where, where the shot making hasn't been there. Uh, what are you seeing? What needs to change? Um, I mean, some, sometimes it's come down to knocking down shots. I mean, uh, we're getting some great looks. And um, obviously, I'm going to take a look at the film when I get back home as I wake up uh, from a nap but um, and, and see other ways maybe we can exploit their defense. But they're giving us some good looks. And, you know, we're, we're just uh, we're not knocking them down. So um, we've had this, you know, happen before in the past. And uh, but we always trust each other. We're going to trust the pass, get the ball moving from side to side and, and trust our shots and, and, and get up there and knock them down. Hi. 
So Ryan, you had those those plays in the first half, um, the, the spin move to the dunk, um, the, the lob off the backboard when they see. Um, how, how are you feeling in that stretch? And does you know you you kind of being able to, to physically get to that level kind of add to the frustration of a guy like AD going out in the second half that just seems like this year once you guys are getting it together, it's just something else happens. Um, you know, I feel pretty good. Uh, uh, a roller coaster for us uh, all year, especially with injuries, and um, and we hope this one isn't isn't a big one. Um, but like I said, it's next man up, and uh, we look forward to the challenge. I'll take four more, uh, Mark Medina. Hello, Brian. Uh, Frank was noting, you know, his time in Indiana that there were times when you were from Miami and we Dame Dwayne Wade or Chris Bosh would be out, and that meant that you'd have even more responsibilities, and that's obviously a dangerous scenario. I was wondering what extent do you draw from those experiences that can apply to this current situation? Um, well, I mean, listen, the best teacher of life is experience. So, um, you know, me personally, I look forward to the challenge, uh, whatever. Um, you know, however the hand is dealt, um, you know, I'll be ready to play. Ramona. Hey, Bron, I, I say this as a 41-year-old, so I certainly don't mean to say that you're older, but at 36, you know, that, how, how, how wide are those shoulders still? Can you, can you do this at, at, this, at this age? Do you care that you, if the baby's not, not able to do your, to, to be out there? Um, you know, for me, um, it's uh, putting our team in position to be successful. It starts with my approach. It starts with my accountability. It trickles down to everybody else. So, um, um, you know, these shoulders was built for a reason. And, um, you know, if it, if it takes for me to put some more on top of it, then so be it. Win, lose, or draw, uh, I'm ready for the challenge. Last two, Yovan. Hello, Ron. Um, you guys obviously played half the season without AD, so if it does go to that scenario, what did you learn about the team during that stretch of you know, four games and some of the stylistic differences with, with AD on versus off? Um, well, I'm, I'm trying not to even you know go back to that moment. Um, obviously, yes, like you said, we played half the season without them, but they also played an extensive uh, time without me. So, um, you know, we would have to go back and look. Um, you know how ways uh, we 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 were really good uh, when he was out, um, and how we played. Uh, we, it would change our dynamic, obviously, of how we play. It would change our approach of how we play. Um, and um, you know, we just you know have a game plan and we go out and execute. Last question, Dwayne. Yeah, LeBron. Obviously, lots of names of AD being out, but you guys were right there. If Shorter makes a layup, you guys only down five with about a minute and a half left. How much can you guys take from that finish to get to that point to carry over into game five? Well, I mean, every possession needs to feel like it's their last. Um, that's just what the playoff basketball is all about. And, um, you know, five point swing right there. You know, uh, like you said, you know, Diaz makes that layup, which he's 99. Uh, percent of making a layup right there in front of the run. He misses it. Um, it kind of let the sales out of us. They go down. Jay Crowder hits the three by their bench. Timeout. You know, the game is, you know, pretty much over at that point. You know, it was a quick five point swing. So uh, we stuck with it. Uh, we stuck into it. We, uh, you know, kept on fighting back and uh, got stops so after stop after stop. Um, and, uh, you know, still made it a game, but uh, they played well. You, you know, I tip my hat uh, to them. They came in, they played extremely well. And, um, you know, it's going to be a big time game five uh, come Tuesday. How much of this now, you say just the offense, the defense, leadership, everything falls kind of on the shoulders of LeBron James. He's been there before, but with no AD, and we don't know how long AD is going to be out or if he's going to be out. But Rob, right now, as, AD, as LeBron said, game five is huge. See, I, I don't think it should fall solely on LeBron's shoulders because I think if you watch this series so far, we've talked about Schroeder. Yep. I think Schroeder needs to take up and load some of the responsibility. I know LeBron is the star of this mm -hmm. team, and everybody looks at him to do so many things. And for me, I don't think you need to do that. I think because you have capable guys like Schroeder, you have capable guys like we need Kuz to step up. So LeBron is a star. He can do it. But I think him and Schroeder should share the load because Schroeder has the advantage, just like LeBron has the advantage. Yeah, LeBron is obviously the leader, and he will take the lead in trying to, you know, get this team back on track. 
But I think if they look at the last six minutes of the of, of the Phoenix game in game four, they only allow Phoenix 19 points. That's where they have to put their trust in collectively. Obviously, LeBron's going to do what he does. He's got to find a way to get guys involved, make it easier for Drummond, get some shots. He'll do that, and he'll probably score more and be more aggressive. But I think you're going to have to need guys like Marc Gasol, Drummond, uh, collective coups, and of course, Schroeder has proven that he can take over a game, score and defend. So, uh, soon as they know they're going to be without AD, if if he's going to miss Game Five, they'll be able to plan and still be pretty good and have a, a really good chance to go into Phoenix and create havoc on the road. Uh, just them on the road. Sometimes you have a tendency to play better on the road when your backs are against the wall. So, we'll see how they respond. Yeah, James, so much focus in the post-game uh, analysis, some of the quotes from the players and the coaches, all about LeBron uh, on Tuesday, if AD cannot go. Schroeder needs to step up, uh, quite frankly. He, he did not shoot well tonight. I believe he was about 30% from the field. He had a good game three, you know, 20 points, four assists. That was not the case tonight. Kuzma, too, uh, not a great series for him so far. He's, he's got playoff experience. He's a champion. He's got to step up and, and play like it because they're going to need him. If there is, again, no AD in two days. All eyes just waiting on the Laker medical report. You know, maybe AD goes for an MRI. Uh, the Lakers have not confirmed that yet. We'll have to see what happens. But Schroeder and Kuz are the top two guys I'll be watching besides LeBron. All right, more to come on Access.